Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Behind the Groove podcast. I am DJ Keo. And I am Basil Barrington. And we are back for the season finale of Foundation, The Leap. And, uh, whoo. <laughs> Dude, this is, uh, man, Harry is a big liar, isn't he? Yeah, he don't give a cup. <laughs> he does not like, care. Dude, you guys are sheep. We we had a different plan, and you were all a part of it, but it's going to work out. You know, his whole, like, w- mm-hmm. did it seem to you that his whole plan was really to destroy the empire? Yeah. Basically, his plan is to wreck the empire. Yeah. And he thinks he can do it in a thousand years, maybe shorter. And he's telling the Empire, no, we're trying to save everything in a thousand years, maybe shorter, but we'll see. It looks like it's going to be a lot shorter, <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah. Those we guys, have to Invictus, man. So, I mean, that's a, that's a huge deal, having Invictus on your side. So They have Invictus. He brought the people to the Foundation on Terminus because yeah. they were builders, they were scientists, you know, everything, mm-hmm. you know. And now that those people, the original people who won mm-hmm. um, Terminus, the foundation, they know how to build additional yeah. ships or, like the Invictus. That's the interesting thing about like the foundation that's on Terminus is they're mm-hmm. all people who, you know, engineers, scientists, mm-hmm. doctors, mm-hmm. whatever, like stuff that you need to rebuild the society or, cause I guess that was, that's what they were thinking from yeah. their end. Mm-hmm. They're like, okay, we need people who can, you know, historians and just that kind of stuff. But we also have technical engineers that can fix, you know, folding drives or whatever the mm-hmm. thing is for how they travel. And so, like, it, it, that's kind of interesting on his part because, you know, you have to bring them there, but you can't really explain why they're there. Because I think realistically, a lot of those people would have been like, I don't know, this is a bit far out for me. I'd rather stay, you know, in Trentor and just have a regular job in university because those aren't. The people that are there and, and for foundation, they're not revolutionaries. Yeah. They're just regular doctors, scientists, whatever. They are now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, Surprise! so yeah, like this is the uh, he engineered the narrative, as he would say, mm-hmm. you know, it's just like you lied, but no, I mean I engineered the narrative, so it's like that. Let me ask you this here. So, you know, you mm-hmm. you know, we're, this is like uh, episode ten. This is um the season finale. You know, everyone's walking around doing everything. I wonder, where are the laundromats? Because I don't see anyone cleaning clothes. <laughs> it's like, do we have any coin-operated laundromats <laughs> on Terminus or, like, even Trantor or Listen, wherever? In the future, everybody <laughs> smells, like, really bad. <laughs> everybody I mean, smells. There's no showers. Dude, everybody's wearing the same I don't outfit. see. I don't see laundromats. I don't see showers. I don't see soap. I don't see yeah, body they're wash. Same, they're wearing the same outfits for like 30 years. So like, it's, it's got to be real bad out there. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> let's, okay. Listen, let's get into, you want to drop a really quick overview and then we can get into it. Okay. So this episode takes place between Terminus and Trantor, mostly, and a little bit of Synax, but mostly between Terminus and Trantor. So I think it opens up with a hologram of Harry uh, brokering a peace deal between the Thespians and Er Er Anacreans. Yeah. And uh, he kind of exposed how they started beefing in the first place. Right. So apparently, uh, was it Cleon the second or the first Cleon? Cleon the second, yeah. Yeah, he he killed the bride of the original Huntress for these people, or one of the Huntresses for these people. Mm And uh, they thought each other did it. And this guy got away scot-free, eliminating a threat on the other side of the galaxy. So you have to worry about them right. until now. And uh, so the other thing that's interesting about this, so we jump between them and Day. What happened to oh, to um, Don? Yeah. So what happened to Don? Ooh, Which I think, yeah. to me, I think the things with Don was the more interesting aspects of the show. So you, you had a bunch of stuff here. So we you called had, a lot um, of stuff too, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, Brother Day brings out the botanist and uh he's like, Hey, 
I killed all your family, your friends, your people that met you. Wow. Somebody you had a, you brushed <laughs> into school with. The person you gave you some lunch money, like you killed everybody. <laughs> it's like a their family, their people. family, yeah. and their family. <laughs> that was wild. He was just like, "Boop, they're all done. They're That's all it. done." And you can see her face, like, "Oh, oh, damn." Yeah. And so there's a bunch of revelations here. So they realize that, well, all of our clones in the future are all messed up. They're gonna all be defective here, and. They learned that Brother Day is defective too, and he didn't realize it because the Shadow Master was like, "Ah, you might possibly be yes, <laughs> possibly yes, yes, you are." No. <laughs> you know. So oh, wow. okay, we got the Hugo's captain of Evictus now, mm-hmm. and uh, Hugo, not Hugo, it's Hugo. Hugo, <laughs> Hugo. he's captain of Evictus, uh, which I kind of. I, I kind of figure he like he, he's seen the most of the space. Yeah. And he's gone farthest, so I think he kind of knows what he's doing. He also seems like he's willing to work with the Akronons or Akronins. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's he seems indifferent about what he's just like, hey, Let's, just trying to get some stuff done. Right. <laughs> so uh okay, what else happened? Uh Gail left the planet. <laughs> she left Terminus. <laughs> and she decided to find out who her parents were, which we called. You mean uh, right? Salvor? Salvor left yeah. Terminus. Sal- you mean Salvor? Sorry, Salvor mm-hmm. left. We called the dude. Call. We, we called did call it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, so she went back to Synax to find her her her, mo- her mom, who she thinks is trying to get there. And they did a time jump because it was 180 something years. 138 so, years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So they did a time jump. And uh, she finally found her. So, like, so is Synax completely destroyed? I guess we could talk about this after, but yeah, I have a question about that. We call um, that too. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what's Surf the point City. of going back? Like, yeah. <laughs> what's the point of going back? All right. So, the big thing here in the show is well, there's two big things. Uh, Foundation discovers that everything's been a lie, they've been lied to, and uh, they're actually revolutionaries now. <laughs> Viva la <laughs> revolution. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, Demerzel kills Dawn, <laughs> which is like a holy crap. I didn't think she was going to do that. And uh, is yeah. there's consequences and repercussions after this. Mm-hmm. Put it like that. So yeah. I'm, I'm, we did call it. Like, she had a vital part in what's going to come in the future. Yeah. I guess, but I, I didn't, I didn't expect her to kill Dawn like that. I didn't think that was going to happen. That's the uh, um, second person. I want to say three because mm-hmm. in the early episodes when they broke into this like scientific facility and they killed everyone except one person, they basically shot her and, you know, destroyed her like, you know. Um, yeah, we, we should count that as her doing some death to people. Yeah. You Breaking know the I'm robot saying? laws. Right? <laughs> well, I, I don't, I think she, you know, I was saying this before. I don't think it, that really, uh, it applies to her. She killed two people for sure. Right. Yeah. yeah but it's cause, cause Asimov's book and it's supposed to be connected. Everybody's like, no, 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 she can't kill, but she's like yeah. slaying people right now. So I don't know. <laughs> she's got a ramble death count at this point. <laughs> I think, you know, I have some questions about that. Let's talk about, um, okay, let's first take it on Mm -hmm. Trantor, okay? Okay, okay. That's the most interesting. um, Okay, so, you know, uh, Day is back. Mm -hmm. And, you know, is it me or is Day, does he seem a bit more open, maybe even weak? Yeah. You know? I think that his experience doing the walk and everything kind of uh it's adjusted his outlook. Especially how he looks at Demerzel too. Right. So well, you know, I think but do you factor. think do you think it um him not seeing a vision is causing him to change a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So like the, um, his his entire experience on a planet has made him a different person than what he thought he was before. Yeah. And especially you could see the difference between him and Dusk. Yeah. Dusk is like, because before he went on that walk, 
they would have been exactly with Dusk in agreement about what to do about Dawn. Yeah, that's true. But after the lock, I he was like, oh, I don't know. I want to keep him alive. Well, I I don't know what his plan was. Like, was he just going to like keep him around the palace? Was he going to banish him? Was he going to bring the other guy in line? Like, what was the plan? I, I think that he was going to say, hey, it's time for you to go to the scar and hang out. Yeah, I think so. You I know? think probably just <laughs> kick so, rocks. <laughs> so so okay so day is like okay he he see again it seems like he's more passionate and also mm-hmm. a little weaker as well right um so he's yeah. contemplating on well we don't necessarily have to kill the person he is still part of us right mm-hmm. and yeah you know dusk, dusk was like, is oh, not no. it. <laughs> that guy's like he's not one of us so, yo we different <laughs> Remember, Dusk was the person who, you know, basically killed millions of people on Thespian yeah, and Akronin. Yeah, mm-hmm. so yeah. he has a little. But you know what? The other thing is this. We said this last week and a week before that, mm-hmm. hey, you know what? Maybe all the Cleons are tainted, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I had I had that kind of vibe. I don't know. We will we'll see if he's tainted as well because we they they left that kind of. They said they can check that right exactly now. Yeah, they're 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 checking him now. So so because he was like you know he basically dusk basically taught told uh, Don he was like you have a deformity right and it's just like wow now Day has (laughs) one and here's the thing right Mm -hmm. so this has been going on since the first well this all this stuff is happening from the. The original Cleon, right? Well, did, did did they specify exactly when they started introducing new things in the DNA? The or how the, it happened. The, the person, yes, with the first Cleon, it started from this. It began when all this entire like genetic dynasty thing started. Okay. So there okay. has been something. Now remember, there are like I think there are two people who have been around as mm-hmm. long as this genetic dynasty. Yeah. Um, Demazel and the Shadow Master. Oh, for sure he's been around. For sure. <laughs> the both of them they've been around since this whole genetic dynasty thing he started, mm-hmm. right? So again, like I said, Demazel has an interesting story. I'm starting to think that oh, this Shadow Master guy, he's kind of um there's something up with him, you know? <laughs> he's He's been around for at least for as we know of on the show, he's been around 30 years ago, yeah, during the first thing. We know for yeah. sure that happened, and he hasn't aged a day, so most likely he's not, not fully human or he's not human at all, right? And because he just takes orders, I don't he, he doesn't really do much talking, like he just takes orders, so he could be just a, a non thinking android type thing. I, that kind of makes sense too. Wow. He's so, got he's visibility. He's got a bunch of other stuff. So, I, I, you know, it's just like, Hey, so if again, you know, it started off this genetic dynasty, they're mm-hmm. all deformed. You know, there's deformity in, in the entire genetic line, the DNA. There have yeah, been so. people on the planet trying to sabotage this dynasty since the beginning of time. Well, it looks, because he said it's more extensive than they realized. Right. And yeah, it's it's the people who are trying to get to destroy the empire has been going on for a minute. So yeah, I, I the, the real possibility is that for hundreds of years, they've been trying to ruin this thing here. <laughs> and they just caught it now. Dude. And you know, the other thing is this. Okay, so we will get to... Uh, um Don in a bit but like he you know when he went to visit um when he went to visit um Azura right mm-hmm. and you know yeah. he basically took the handcuffs off he unshrouded her and then they went for a he walk. The- <laughs> yeah <laughs> he the- whoa <laughs> right and then he was talking to her and everything i thought that he was going to say you know what you and Don mm-hmm. can go to the scar and live life forever but no this guy, woo, he said, basically, you have, what, 781 relatives. Mm-hmm. 
first cousins, second cousins, two, three removed, grandmothers, great, great grandparents, whatever, you know, (laughs) and then he also said, and then every single person, you know, even people who work here on Trantor that, you know, in the garden, you know, your first kiss, you know, your first boyfriend, the person you lost your virginity to everyone. Yeah. So it came out to like what? A 1,551. He mm-hmm. killed every single one of them. Like mm-hmm. they, these people, there will be no one in the galaxy who remembers who you are and what you did. No one. See, the crazy thing is like, you know, she had an attempt on the throne. Yeah. They tried to, they tried to take him out. Like technically they did try and take him out. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, as far as like is this proportional <laughs> it kind of is though <laughs> from you know his based, perspective, this is absolutely proportional right. based on what they do and how much power they have right and how they you know rule yeah. the galaxy yeah this is like but you know her her um so that was one of her punishments and the other one was she, she stays alive she's gonna be totally shrouded forever yeah, she's gonna be fed by iv and yeah, you're, just al- you're alive thinking, but you can't smell. You you can't you can't you know taste. You can't do anything like like just wow. Think, oh my god, yo, that is wild. That you is think, brutal uh, for a jail because like being in like a, a like a two by two box or whatever, so you can't do anything. It's just a square box. That's punishment. Yeah. But imagine like you can't even move now. And all you can do is think. Can't see nothing. I mean, you can't even open your yeah. mouth because you're shrouded and you're being fed via IV. So that's wild, man. That wow. that is a crazy punishment. Like that. I would, you, uh, if you really think about it, like you're stuck in your own thoughts. Yeah. And your thoughts are like you're you're in thoughts in blackness too. Mm-hmm. So it's not like you, you can see right. the sunrise come up or someone's gonna give you some food. He could talk to you. Like you're just in your own thoughts, mm-hmm. twenty four hours a day, or however long you're up, <laughs> till you go to sleep and wake up more thoughts. Like that's just oof. you don't even know like that's when tough. when it's time to go to sleep. I guess you'll figure it out. But you know, here's the other thing, right? I mean, if you're going to be mm-hmm. a revolutionary, you know, and and hey, you, you know, be the foundation, for the dude, you don't have like a cyanide tooth or something you can just bite into <laughs> and like. Mm-hmm. You know, something like that. I mean, it's just like, no, I'm like, you can, it's just like, you are messing with the empire. So you better have a way to yeah. commit suicide if you have to. Yeah. You can't get caught. Like that's just that you can't get caught. Dude, period. she is done. And then, yeah. you know, um, Dave was basically talking to um, Don, like, I mean, what's going on? You know, you sold this out. And he was like, no, I, I didn't even know this was going on. How did I know? You know? Um, mm-hmm. and again, you know, was, they just that was showed, interesting. Was what's that? No, because he had that talk and he asked him like, "Hey, did you yeah. ever think about running away or whatever?" Right. And I think they all must have had those those kind of thoughts. Yeah. Because I that's a tough job to fill in. Like you're expected to stay. You're gonna be in the middle, and you're gonna be here for thirty years or whatever. Then you're gonna get old, and you're gonna be mm-hmm. here for a little bit, and then you're gonna die. Yeah. That's it. That's your life. You can't do and, anything else. And you have to oversee, like, you know, trillions of people. Yeah. A whole galaxy, a, you know? That is a tough job. I'm sure there had to have been some people that were questioning their, what am I doing? Can I do something else with my life? Yeah. And, yeah, man. I thought so, that was an interesting conversation. You know, Dusk, he was like, no, dude, you know what we have to do. Mm-hmm. And so... You know, Dave was like, he's like, we don't, we don't have to do that. We can keep him on, basically. I think that's what he was about to say. You think so? Yeah, but like, how do you trust that guy with the future? I don't trust that guy with anything. No, 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 not keep him on as an empire. Oh, like you can but, stay you know, alive. Like, listen, yeah, dude, you've been alive. like, you know, exiled to the scar, you know, or something like that. You know, but you got um, like one of the most recognizable faces in the in the galaxy. Like just having that DNA or something could be used for something else. So it, it kind of makes sense why he can't exist outside. Like that's but a problem. It, it also seemed like Dave was about to like say, Hey, you know what? Well, we can work mm-hmm. something out. And, um, but mm-hmm. dust got pretty pissed off. So I punching, um, <laughs> yo, they were fighting. I, I did not see that coming. 
I'm like, why yeah. didn't they just go, dude, eh, you know, <laughs> and just like, yeah. he's like, oh, you know, or something like that. I don't, I don't understand all that. You know, you he's like force on each other. Like, <laughs> man, Dusk is like he? real aggressive, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, this, this guy's about it, man. He's a hunter. He's ready to go. So, you he's, know, he's when, when day came though. into the spot and he was like, you know, he met up with uh day and, uh, um, mm-hmm. Dusk. You know, Demazel brought him in. I don't know what what was the whole. You know, she sort of like put her hand on the bottom towards you know on his back. What was that? Yeah, all so about? he so he can't back out because you know, like I think the other dusk, he had like second thoughts before it was his time to go, mm-hmm. and I think he paused for a second. She's like, "Nope, it's time keep going, keep but, walking. You're not getting but, out of this." But um, but. Um, Don, he did look at her and sort of nod his head, and they both nodded their heads, like you know, yeah, so like I don't it's know. Happening. You gotta go face your judgment here, right? So they go in, and you know they're arguing. You know, like Dusk and Day are, mm-hmm. are you know, just getting into a huge argument, and um, and then mm-hmm. um, Don like runs over to Demoiselle, all weak and everything, ah, 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 you know, and she's like, "It's okay, baby, it's okay." And then you know what happens. She just like, do you, okay, so let me ask you this, right? Mm -hmm. Because, okay, first of all, you know, we were saying that, you know, robots can do no harm. No, that's not true here anyway, right? Because she switched these two people at least, right? On this show, they are, they don't care about the three laws of robotics. They don't care. Right. You know, the, you know, when she offed um, um, Halima, she Mm -hmm. it was subtle you know she touched her and you know secreted like poison but with dawn she do she just like ripped his like "Eh," cracked his neck (laughs) but you know what let me ask you this here do you think that i think she knew demoiselle knew that um day was about to you know give uh dawn some leeway and I don't know what yeah. that means. I don't know if it meant like, hey, he would stay like an empire, but, you know, he yeah. have to go through rehab or they would send him to the scar. But yeah. Demazel was like, no, 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 dude. You can't go to the planet. You can't go to my planet, you know, mm-hmm. take over my religion or disrespect my religion then come up here like, you know, you're holier than thou. And then mm-hmm. say, hey, you know, I have... I, I have a bit more compassion. She was like, no, 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 no. This, I'm killing this fool. And she just like, whip. Yeah. You think that has something to do with it? Well, I think on her end, because she said I'm loyal to Empire, because I think they were like, what in the hell? Like, you can right. kill us? Like, <laughs> but I think she was like, look, look, hey, pause. I am loyal to the Empire, and this guy's going to be a problem for the Empire. So, yeah. You know, whoever's on the throne, it is what it is. But like, we got to be do the good for the empire here. And this is part of the good for the empire. Right. I think that honestly, I think that's how she was looking at it. Right. I don't know if the religion thing came into it, but I think for certain she looked at it as like, I'm loyal to the empire only. And no matter what, this is about the empire. I think she was pissed off. I think she was pissed off because again, uh, day went down to her planet like disrespected mm-hmm. her religion, you know, lied about seeing yeah, vision did. and everything. Yeah, 100% and did. She was really pissed off and she was like, because the Empire could have said, do not touch Dawn. And mm-hmm. she had to basically say, okay, you know. But yeah, she just, she, she like <laughs> ripped his head. Like, uh, again, I, I kind of feel like she was like, you know what? No, 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 dude, you can't come up here with, with all this compassion. You lied. You disrespected my religion. So, now mm-hmm. I can kill this Don, I can kill this empire, and then say mm-hmm. I have loyalty to the the dynasty or the empire. Here's the thing. Mm-hmm. For me personally, if I was Day, I would like decommission this robot right now. <laughs> <laughs> this robot's done here. <laughs> I don't care, man. <laughs> Knowing that she's not affected by the whatever the ruling class of Dawn, Dusk, and, and Day. Yeah. Like and she's not supposed to be able to touch them, and she did. So, like for me personally, I would like she can't, she can't leave. Well, <laughs> you know, no. Dusk this did say that. Well, you know what we have to do. Yeah, like we so have to I kill guess, this fool. I mean, it. I guess it counts as an order. 
te- technically, if you think about it, it kind of counts as an order, mm-hmm. but like Day's supposed to make the decision, not Dusk or or anybody else. And Day was like, "Nope, don't do that." She did it anyway. That's why I was like, "Nope, she's done. She can't stay in here inside, or you know, the the palace, wherever she can't, she can't exist anymore because you know how powerful she is." Well, the other thing is like, so when she went back to her uh, quarters, right, and she just started yeah, taking her skin her off, like off. she was really upset. Why do you think she was upset? Well, I don't think she wanted to do it. I think that she it was didn't want to like, kill uh, Dawn. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. she's sympathetic to Dawn and having the Empire change, mm-hmm. which is interesting to me because they're still not looking at her as a possible reason why they're the whole line, the lineage is messed up now for the DNA. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's not implicated in this at all, which is amazing. Not yet. To me I would be like, this is suspect number one, maybe two, Mm -hmm. possibly two. Maybe the Shadow Master had something to do with it, you know? I mean, that's possible too, but like, you you want to say somebody who's there from the beginning, she was there. Mm -hmm. So you can't say anybody else in the palace was there at the time when this thing happened. You know, for certain she was. And her job is to look after, you know, the new future clones. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, who else are you going to talk to about this? Dude, so this I whole, know. the entire genetic dynasty has a deformity. Like I said, the, there are some like DNA traits that's happening throughout the entire genetic dynasty. And we now know that that is the case. Something else you predicted last week too. You said episode mm. nine, you know, with these sort of shows like this, the, the if it's 10 episodes the ninth episode is generally the blockbuster episode yes yeah, and then the effect. and then the last the season finale <laughs> is basically <laughs> right it's just calm down we're going to yeah. like drop some nuggets so you were correct yeah. there we also uh correctly predicted that um you know hey maybe this is a genetic you know dna uh, you know mm-hmm. a dna defect throughout the entire um you know, genetic dynasty looks like that's the case. Now, let me ask Mm -hmm. you a question before we move on to the next segment. Um, If dusk is also deformed, (laughs) that's what I'm going to start saying there. If he's also deformed, what happens now? That's a huge problem because they have to bring in somebody that could have, but it's a problem, but not necessarily. Because now that they know what they're looking for, they can kind of look into, you know, keep pay more attention to the the future Don to keep an eye on him to make sure he's actually up to stats with right. <laughs> what's coming up next. But I'm so, saying, but what happens to like all the other sort of clones? Because the they're, they're like uh, the defect is in the original one that they keep pulling a DNA from. Well, that's the question. Like, do you start pulling from the clones or, you know, you're getting the DNA from this thing that's messed up and you can't fix it because that's the only one there. <laughs> I mean, they don't have I like, don't know. you know, some DNA from like grandpapa or something like that. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Like, I mean, come on, all this technology, you don't have the DNA from like someone like far yeah, well, removed from everything. I- I would probably just have a kid with somebody and start with that giant, that gene pool. <laughs> <laughs> Cause like this clone thing's not working anymore. <laughs> Let me and, ask you this. So. What's up? We had a time jump. So we had a hundred and something years now. Mm-hmm. What's coming next for the show for the future? What do you think is going to be the new focus for the show? Okay. You want to, okay, so that's a good segue. You want to jump into um, the Gale and Salvor situation on Synax? Because that's where yeah, the okay. jump happened, okay? Yeah, right? yeah, the jump happened there, yeah. Yeah. So apparently, Salvor was also away for a century. Yeah. That's what she said. It's just like, okay, she went into like this cryopod and crashed and landed on you know synax and was in the water you know and so and here comes (sighs) gail right well how okay so how long do you think she crash landed on the planet first yeah i don't think it was the whole 100 and was it 30 years i can't remember 180 years i think salvor says she was there um 
like over her, her plane crash or her, her ship crashed over a century ago. It's 187 years in the future. Is it um, from, from when? No, 138, 138 years 138? later. Okay. Yeah, because that's how long it took her pod to reach Synax. So, yeah. and here's the thing about that, right? Mm-hmm. So, Salvor crashed a century ago, 100 years ago, um, on Synax, and her mm-hmm. pod fell into the water. So, it was underneath, it was um, beneath the, uh, the sea or whatever, right? Um, mm-hmm. And then here comes Gail, right? At, you know, again, 138 years. Um, so she, <laughs> you mean to tell me, so remember when she was on Synax speaking to her parents, she was saying like, listen, you don't understand the math doesn't lie. We need to build these houses taller, everything else. Right. So yeah. we won't get the, wiped out by the water. Right. She knew that back then. And that was like two, like 138 plus the 34 years. She knew that like almost 170 years, right? And yeah. so, but what she wanted to do was go back to the planet she's from, Synax, knowing that it, would be, it wouldn't even be there because she predicted her that herself. I got to be honest, the, the writers for the show, they're writing her really badly. <laughs> They're, for her, she's yeah, a, they are. She's not an interesting character at all. No, she's not. Right? A lot of yelling and a lot of poor logic from a math whiz. Yeah. Because like, what are you? What were you going home to? You knew the thing was coming. I mean, and you, you know predicted. What was you knew it was happening any moment now. Yeah. And you're like, I'm gonna come back here in a hundred and something years and see what's up. Did she just think these people who are basically in mud huts? We're going to get more science in them and start building something like on the water, uh, mud huts on, on the, water. the water in the middle yeah, of that, nowhere. You know, the, you know, the thing, the, the one thing that annoyed me is when she got to the planet and she broke out the oars, I was like, you're going to roll your boat. You're in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> when the, you landed your plane there or your, your pod, when you landed in the water, there was nothing around you. And then you go like this two times and you're next to the, those university. I'm like, yeah. how did this happen? Like, that's just poor writing right there. Well, the other thing is, you know, you had a lot of like modern creature uh, comforts there. Like for instance, an oar. Um, yeah. You know, What's when the she. motor on the boat? What... <laughs> there should have been like an electric motor. A hovercraft that, that or something, right? Yeah. That would have made more sense to me if the thing like yeah. your pod turns into a boat or something. A I'm lot like, of like right, 2021 yeah. things that were popping off, like when she was um, entering orbit, the Synax orbit, mm-hmm. and, you know, she had to buckle herself up. She used very basic buckles, you know, that you see. Yeah, that? Like really- <laughs> I'm like, dude, this is I have this on like, you know, coats <laughs> that I have now. I would expect it to be like the lace of shoes that just come. Yeah, into your just thing press a button and it's like, shoo, 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 you know, yeah, exactly. almost, yeah, just like when you when you go into like when the spacers prepare you to go into the jump or something like that. Yeah, they, so you they, have this they, technology, they, but then you don't have this technology. You have high tech and then you have low tech. It's kind of weird, right? Um, it's kind of silly. And we also predict it correctly. And again, we're not book people in terms of reading mm-hmm. foundation. You know, we're just people who enjoy you know, watching sci-fi stuff, but we predicted that um, Salvor is the daughter of Gail. Yes. Who didn't know that? (laughs) That was obvious. When you see the dreams of your parents that you don't know, you have no connection to, I was like, ah, come on. Right. You know, so she was like, hey, I got to go see my mama. You know what I'm saying? Now your daughter's older than you, though, so there's that. (laughs) Why? (laughs) <laughs> so yeah, this, this is what I was thinking too. I was like, okay, so, you know, who's ever doing the writing for Gail isn't doing a great job, but now she knows that she is a mother. So maybe she will start acting a bit more adult, like, because she has a daughter now. Yeah. Her writing still has lots of screams and poor logic. Yeah. Hopefully they fix that. <clears throat> so how are they getting off the planet now? Oh, well, you know. like, Hey, you got your mom. Okay. You have no communication. That's iPhone. like a backwater planet. iPhone. Can't really, like, is there, because those guys, I guess the, those guys used to come on the ship and land there, but either the, everybody moved like further away. Or drowned. Doesn't make sense, <laughs> or they drowned. Yeah. The whole planet drowned. Because I guess, gonna... is, the, is the whole planet like 30 people that are sitting on these huts? Like, what is the planet? That's basically is it, you know. 
I'm going to say she, they're going to pull out an iPhone because, you know, they have like poor writing for her. I'm going to say they probably have a, she probably has an iPhone somewhere, a flip phone, you know, a sidekick or something like that, you know, like, you know, through like some a Blackberry somewhere, you know, I, I don't know. But um, no, I think she has like a something where she can communicate yeah, with someone. She, she had that hologram type <laughs> yeah. thing there. Right. I don't know how powerful that is to reach the satellites to transfer or something to okay whatever hey man <laughs> it's we're fine. not even you know i think um that the way they jump with time i think you know when the next season starts we're not even going to know how they got off the planet they're just going to yeah, appear gonna on start. terminus you know and it's just like yeah oh they're on terminus okay so that's that's where so we are terminus now, has know? to be pretty well built from by the time they get to when they get back there well, let's let's go to Terminus let's, let's now hear. because, like you know, they they started building a lot more buildings. It's, this thing is turning into yeah. the suburbs, you know. I'm telling Around you, you know, around the tree that they they uh, they uh, planted for far, right? Mm -hmm. You can see there's a bunch of pods and stuff around it, so right. they they built up that community from the three planets. So right. there's a there's a cool possibility that they should be space fearing people by now, and they did so, the. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead. They did the what? They so they did the flare thing from the Victus to make everybody think, oh, we're this planet got destroyed, mm -hmm. some kind of black hole or something, which they they assumed the the Trentor would leave them alone for a couple hundred years because they, they think the planet out. is dead, right? Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, that so, that's interesting to me because that definitely gives them time to build and gather resources and stuff. Build a few more Invictus is, chips, chips, you know? Yeah, for real, man, yeah. you know? I mean, I don't think that Trantor has anything as powerful as the Invictus. Yeah. Well, it's the world killer. I think they, I think they do, like, more modern versions of it, but, like, this mm -hmm. this levels the playing field. This is like a, a F-18 versus an F-22 like they'll both do damage to you for fighter like a jets. Spitfire versus an F twenty two. Yeah, like, well, I mean, like this is—it's a planet killer. So, like, it was, it was fairly powerful for his day. Yeah, and it, so it has to—it has to do enough damage that they'd be worried about it. They saw one on the horizon there. That's true. So they, it, those are big ships, man. They got the spinning thing and everything. So, like, those how are you gonna huge, have a man. lot of them lined up against each other? I don't know, man. But, you know, so here's <laughs> Harry. Harry basically has been lying the whole time. It's like, no, you're not saving, you know, the galaxy. <laughs> you guys Harry's are funny. here. Yeah, you guys are here to become, you know, to start a revolution, basically. That's mm -hmm. basically what he, you know, it was all a lie. And, you know, he engineered the narrative. It was just like, wow, Harry is a huge liar. That's a kind of douchebag move because you have people. I'm a librarian. I have to pick up guns now and start shooting the empire. Like, what? I didn't sign up for this. Like, yeah, it's just it's like like Salvor's like mom was like, I can't. I didn't sign up for this. He, but you know, he was like, you know, um, we need uh, three legs. You know, basically, he was saying like a stool. You know, so he had the people, the original people from Foundation, and then the other two sort of groups of people, the Akronins and the Thespians, right? So now yeah. he said, hey, in order, you guys now have the ability to create a totally new way of life, or, you know, protect mm -hmm. yourselves, you know, go up against the empire. You know, this is not something foundation wasn't something where, you know, we were building out something so that people can live forever, you know, have this thing to like go by. It was just like, no, we came here to be um to 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 create a revolution and to destroy the empire destroy the dynasty wow mm -hmm. and the thing too about it is that everybody agrees with it yeah like the people in foundation are like yeah empire's gotta go yeah they even agree and, with it huh yeah the other two plants are like yeah we were trying to do that but you know <laughs> if we have some scientists with us that'd be better we have yeah. a better plan here and it, it's a good mix of people like you have soldier type people you have, you know, people can build and scientists, kind of stuff, engineers, you know, the whole nine. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty you need cool. That military wing of it and the smart people wing of it too. Yeah. So the vault was like Harry's tomb, the whole nine, huh? Yeah. His, 
his robot self, this entire this process. Is, Harry's goes, pretty arrogant, isn't he? He's very arrogant. <laughs> I'm telling he's you. Like, I, you're supposed he, to like him, but also like, that's kind of douchey, man. <laughs> he, you know, I'm telling you, I keep uh, visualizing him with a pipe, you know, just like, <laughs> of course I was lying to you. <laughs> You are all like, here to dead, help man. me destroy the empire. <laughs> you can't get you can't even get mad about it. There's nothing you can do to him. You're already yeah. here. So <laughs> But hey, you know what? He also he's created he created this stuff. He created all this stuff. He was like, listen, you know what? He basically, you know, debunked what the Empire said, why, you know, mm. the um Acronyms and the thespians why they were fighting he basically debunked that he was he was like no 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 you know i know you guys had like you know the cleon 2 came you know he used the uh, uh, handmade and um you know that's why you know this this person killed you know your huntress you know a thespian killed a huntress it's just like wow okay you know but they were married too so the whole thing was like and the whole thing was all about well, if you can get these two people, these two species to fight each other forever, then we could just yeah, walk away. Yeah. Yeah. And they're on the edge of the galaxy, so they're not close right. by. Exactly. Yeah, you keep <laughs> eyeing them. Now you forgot they exist, so like it's right. kind of better for you. Wow. <laughs> now, now they're a real problem now, and they join forces with two other people, uh, one other person. It is insane, man. I'm telling you. So then he's like, you guys, okay, this is what you're supposed to do. Carry on. I'm going back to my tomb. See you later. <laughs> I have. Um, how, does, how does this tomb thing work? Like, does he pop out when there's a crazy crisis? Like, when, when does he know to pop out? Like, how are you supposed to get a hold of him? <laughs> it's like an iPhone. <laughs> you know, it's just, I'm telling you, an iPhone's going to pop up somewhere for real. You know, this is an Apple TV show. But um, I think that. Um, I think that Gail and Salvor will come back to Terminus and they will know how to, because Salvor already knows how to like activate the tomb to, you know, for, to, I guess, yeah. summon, you know, um, Harry, you know, just by using the cube, you know, and it's just mm -hmm. like, so, you know, Gail already knows how to do that. So I think that's how, that's how, you know, they would summon, you know, I guess re, you know, introduce Harry, you know, by using this cube, but they have to get back to Terminus too, right? Yeah, so they definitely, I think by the time they get back, they're going to have a next crisis. Yeah. And I think that's going to, I guess, be the focus for the next season. Mm. They, have, they have a lot of stuff to cover too, and they're going to do the, 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 definitely the time jump. It could be, you know, so they already did the time jump for a hundred and something years now. What do you think the next time jump is another hundred years? Like what's, what's it going to be? How far in the future? Um, it's weird because, you know, the first show, the second season of these episodic, you know, shows, um, the first, um, episode of the second season generally is action pack, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, yeah, you know, you so who, in. Who knows, you know, we may start the first, uh, the second season, first episode with like a huge fight where, you know, it's like 14, you know, Invictus ships, you know, fighting, you know, Trantor, the Empire. Who knows? Like the Empire, it's, like. it's, it's definitely going to be, you know, a few hundred years, a few centuries, mm -hmm. you know, into the future. I think so. What do you think? Yeah, I, I think. There's a very real possibility that they're like at least another maybe 30, 50 years in the future, yeah. maybe a hundred. Mm -hmm. But for the people on the planet, that's enough to build a good gen. Because you think about here on Earth, right? A hundred years in America is a long time. It's they long went from time, horse dude. and buggies to a computer that fits in your pocket in a hundred yeah. years. Yeah, for sure. And you know we got, you know we have cars, we got airplanes, we got a bunch of stuff happening in a hundred years, and these guys are already future tech on their planet, or whatever. They all can they can fold space and they can fly around quickly, or whatever. Or I, I don't know how they do the, what is it? What's that? It's like a hyperdrive, whatever the drive is to move around. They have a thing that they can do now to move between this place, and the technology is already there. So a right. hundred mm -hmm. years from them. 
they maybe they got flying cars in the city now. Like, what, what do they got? They got hover car. Maybe they got, well, they got something else to be like yeah. just further along. I think it'll mm-hmm. be more like a city type vibe than still huts and stuff. Terminus, yeah. I also think that, um, you know, when they do start the second season, we'll know more about like, um, what's mm-hmm. going on with the genetic dynasty. I mean, have they, you know, brought in like, you know, specialists to get rid of, you know, some of these like DNA traits that people have embedded in, you know, the first like, can you do or that? whatever. I mean, dude, they, you know, they have the technology, you know, I mean, who knows, right? Yeah. I mean, you got the nanobots thing, so maybe you can repair some of this stuff. I don't know. Right, to they, fight they off to some things, right, exactly, you know, or yeah, they, just have some robots totally create the perfect Cleon and start using, maybe the Cleons become robots, who knows? Well, eh? Then maybe you just have one, like you said before, you know, why not just have one Cleon and it's just like this robot who yeah, lives forever. That, they should have been doing that from the beginning. I don't know why they I don't understand the three. It. That's weird, isn't it? Yeah, they know they should have had a robot there to download his consciousness to a new body and keep right. moving like that. Exactly. Instead of the three thing. I like I like the idea of the three thing for TV, mm. but it's cool. It would have made more sense to have like a, a Demerzel type body and just put his brain into it. Mm. And you know, like even thing like with Harry stuff. If you don't actually have to touch him, you would never know Harry was a, a hologram. Yeah. So from it's from the real. Empire's mm-hmm. perspective, you don't need to you don't you can't even supposed to get close to him in the first place. So you can do everything off of video calls and like space zoom calls. You don't need right. to be in person. <laughs> you know, you can just look like this guy's running things and everything's going good over here. <laughs> I like you don't know. Only you know, people in Palace know. Like the special guards, everybody else is oblivious. The palace so. intrigue is popping off at uh <laughs> in, in, in terms of the empire on Trantor. Well, wow, man, it's we, crazy. We still got to deal with Demerzel. Like, we're, is she gonna get a new face? They gonna decommission her? Like, what's gonna or happen? Or she's just here? gonna be like, <laughs> you know, just use the <laughs> wand. You know, you can't no. have your robot that can kill all of you. Have a nervous breakdown. Like, that's no good. That's bad for business. Dusk will say to Day, do not destroy Demazel because she is loyal to the Empire, to the Cleon dynasty, right? Yeah, but this is this is like 130 years now by the time we actually get back to them again. So it's very possible that they ran through three or four Cleons by the time we get to the show with Trentor again. Well, yeah, so that's yeah. That's, that's true, dude. <clears throat> like Cleon, the, Cleon, like the thirty fourth, <laughs> you know, something yeah, like, like that, right? So it's at least like, the twentieth wow. Cleon, like oh my minimum goodness. at at least, because like how long do they rule for it? Because it, it's never really specified how long. No, they I, rule it seemed like thirty K. years. You keep saying thirty years. I think it's thirty or forty years, something like that. You know, I mean that makes sense, but like mm. Day is always young. So I'm yeah. assuming like he gets on the throne when he's 30 and they transition about when he's like 50, I guess. I guess so, because Dusk is, um, you know, you may have to get rid of Dusk for real because he's, like, Dusk, he's a madman. Yeah. Well, that Dusk. Yeah. That so, one like, is a madman, you know? Yeah. Like Dusk has to be what, in the 70s at least, maybe. Yeah. Probably. I, don't, I, I, I wish it was more clear about how this system works, like how long these guys. Maybe they take the throne at age 30 and then mm-hmm. they're there for 30 years. And then when they leave, they're 60 or white and gray and everything. And I don't know, mm-hmm. you know, something like that. But um, but man, this was like, you know, the season finale. And before we even go into our rating, I just want to say this. Mm-hmm. So next week. We are thinking about doing a recap of Foundation the entire season. Um, And what we would like to do is bring on some people to talk about it. So people who, you know, those who watch um, our reviews and those who comment, if you are interested in being a guest on the show, and the only way you can do that is to, one, make sure that your camera is 1080p, it's in landscape and you show your face, no avatars, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know? So if you're interested, leave a comment or, you know, um, send us an email. The email address is on the about us page on a YouTube channel. 
and uh, just let us know. And then, you know, we're thinking about doing this, you know, the Friday after, well, the day after Thanksgiving or that Saturday. But anyway, try to get back to us like by Tuesday and we can set everything up, you know, and um, because we'll just recap the entire, you know, season. Mm -hmm. Right now we're just reviewing uh, episode 10, The Leap. The season finale, dude, okay. (laughs) Foundation, The Leap. Episode 10, season finale. What's your rating? Uh, I'll say this, though. Ener- energy's way down from, from the episode 9. Yeah. But uh, it, there's a lot of good stuff that happened that builds for the next season. So I, I give it an 8. I give mm-hmm. it an 8. Okay. And, and, um, I'm, I'm definitely interested in seeing what comes next. Like it oh, didn't, yeah. It didn't leave me like, oh, I don't care about this show anymore. Like I'm excited to see what comes next. So, yeah. All day. Now, let me ask you this, um, and we will get into the recap next week, but overall, what do you think about season one? What's your rating on season one? I like the season. Mm-hmm. I The thing that's interesting to me is that there's characters that I liked. Like Empire, I liked throughout the entire season. I mm-hmm. thought they're, that's a great character. It's very interesting, whatever. I didn't like Salver at first. I liked her now. Mm-hmm. I, I was okay with Gail. I really dislike Gail. <laughs> I'm cool with Hugo. Mm-hmm. Raish, I was indifferent about, but the main characters, Harry, I liked. I like that. I like the actor that plays Harry anyway. I'm yeah, a huge fan yeah. of him. You know. But um Me too. Like Harry's good character regardless. Acting wise, everything's good. So like I, I was invested into the show. I really like the characters. Except for Gil. Mm-hmm. And uh, I like the story. The story is interesting to me. As space operas, I'm on board. Sign me up. What's your rating on it? The whole show? The whole season? The whole the whole season? I give it an eight. I give eight. it a strong okay, eight. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, I am going to give the uh, season finale, episode 10, The Leap, um, mm-hmm. an 8.5, a little slower than nine, as you predicted. Um, yeah, <laughs> but I like how they left it too. You know, they didn't leave you like totally hanging. They were like, we mm-hmm. knew that Gail was going to come and they were probably, she would probably meet up with her daughter, Salvor. Um, we mm-hmm. also knew that, you know, there were going, there was going to be some sort of a, an alliance on Terminus. And that happened. We also knew that, there was some weirdness going on with this genetic dynasty. Um, but again, even though we predicted these things, it was still good to see and, you know, see how they put it all together, you know? So, um, yeah. so yeah, eight, I'm going to wait a minute, you know, yeah. 8.5 for me. I'm going to give episode uh, 10, 8.5. Um, and the whole now season? the whole season, I'm giving the whole season a nine. Um, okay. I like, the visual effects. I mean, that was just uh, visual is great. Come on. They're visual really effects may be like a hundred, you know, um, <laughs> uh, for the really most good. part, I like the characters, you know, Gail was, I, I don't know. She just, like you said, who are, who's been writing for her? I'm not quite sure because Terrible. you know they're, they're making her completely annoying. Right. Um, yes. Salvor is like, she's a, she's beast mode, dude. She's just like, she's solid. The whole nine. Mm-hmm. Harry, I like Harry. I like all the um empires too, all the Cleons, you know? I mean Yeah. You every as a matter of fact, all the characters are pretty dope, with the exception of Gail. Now I know <laughs> <laughs> it's it's kind of sad though, right? Because yeah. it's like it's she's basically the foundation, right? Her and Harry. Yeah, she's leading the show. Right. She's- She's vital to the show next season. We got to deal I with think, her yelling and screaming. I hope that um, she, you know, they they really hold her up, like, you know, for the next season. They have to because she's going to be more involved in, like, Terminus and everything yeah. else, you know. Next week, we are going to do a season recap of Foundation. If you are interested in hopping on the podcast, you know, leave a comment or go to the About Us page and uh, drop us an email. And again, you have to be 1080p landscape mode and you got to show your face. No avatars. And, you know, if you want to do some goofy stuff, 
We're not having that either. <laughs> you know, so don't come on doing your goofy stuff and everything else. I mean, we like to have fun. So, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's all good. Just keep it clean and, um, you know, we'll have a good time. Well, there you have it. Another episode of the Behind the Groove podcast. I am Basil Barrington. I am DJ Keel. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment. And until next time, peace. All right.